This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be expanding on our flock functionality by giving our flock agents the ability to kind of evaluate the different objects that are in its context. In this particular example, we're going to look at what happens if we have more than one flock in our scene. Right now, our flock just has to worry about its own neighbors, and it always knows that everything is part of its flock. But what would happen if there were, say, two flocks operating in the same space? In order to do this, I'm actually going to make a couple duplicates of my flock agent prefab. Let's do that with Control D. And I'm going to call one of these flock agent orange, and the other flock agent blue. Now in each of these cases, I'm going to go to the sprite, and I'm simply going to change its color just so that we can differentiate between the two of them. Now I can go back to my scene view, and I'm going to duplicate my flock as well. And I'll name these so that we have flock blue and flock orange. And lastly, I'll apply the appropriate prefab to each. I'm also going to select both and just drop this number down to about 100 just so that we don't have too, too many agents running around at once and we can kind of see what's happening here. Okay, so now when I hit play, what we'll see is that all of the agents flock together. We see the blue and orange kind of working together here and here, basically wherever they collide, they all treat each other as if they're all part of the same flock, which may be okay depending on what your particular design is. But in my case right now, what I want is for these each to operate independently of one another. And so in order to do this, we're going to need to apply a couple of things. The first thing we're going to need to do is have an agent be able to identify which flock it's a part of. Currently, it does not have that information. We're going to need to add that in. Secondly, we're going to apply what we're calling a context filter that will basically take in the list of transforms that are around a particular agent and will filter them based on some criteria that we establish. Similar to how we did our behavior objects as scriptable objects, we're going to make these filters into scriptable objects as well and make our behaviors able to apply these context filters. So to start, I'm actually going to jump into our flock agent script in Visual Studio. And what we need to do here is we need to add a new variable. And so up here, just above the agent collider, I'm going to add a flock variable called agent flock, as well as a getter. So I'm going to say public flock agent flock. And this is going to get return our agent flock. Now I need to initially, initially set this as well. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a public method called initialize, which our flock, when it first creates the agent, can call and pass itself in. So we'll say here, public void initialize. And in here, we're going to pass in the parameter of flock, and we'll just call that flock. And so we can say agent flock equals Okay, so that's all we need to do inside of the flock agent. Now we can go over to our flock script, and in here, down in our start method where we're actually instantiating this new agent, in addition to naming it and placing it, we're going to say new agent dot initialize and pass in itself, the flock, so that it now, now this agent knows I belong to a flock and this is the particular flock that I belong to. Now, not all of our behaviors are going to actually get a context filter. So the next thing we need is a context filter, which is going to be what is going to process our list of neighboring transforms and determine which ones we want to keep and which ones we want to discard. So I'm going to go back over to Unity, and I'm going to create a couple of things. I'm going to create a C-sharp script called context filter. 
And I know this is going to be a scriptable object like my flock behaviors, so I'm also gonna create two folders similar to the behavior object and scripts folders. I'm gonna create a folder called filter objects and a folder called filter scripts. Now that accidentally popped into my objects folder, but I'll just drag that back into assets. And so there we have them both. Now inside of filter objects, we can't do anything yet because we don't have any of the scripts written yet. Um, inside of filter scripts, I will create one additional C sharp script, which is going to be called same flock filter. And so this is gonna basically filter through our transforms and say, if you're in the same flock as me, I will keep you and I will reference you. Otherwise you're gonna get discarded. With that, let's open up context filter in Visual Studio. And context filter is actually going to be an abstract class because we're never just going to have a plain con context filter. And we're going to make this inherit from scriptable object. Inside of here, we're going to have one public method. It's going to be public abstract. It's going to return a list of transforms. It's simply going to be called filter. And it's going to take in our flock agent so that we can compare the agent against other things in the list and our original list transform of neighbors, which I'm going to call original. And that's all that's gonna go into our context filter class. Next, we can open up our same flock filter, and we can create our first filter that we have. So like we had with our behavior objects, we need to be able to actually create them. So I'm gonna do a create asset menu attribute up here. It's going to take a menu name. In this case, we're going to use flock filter, and we're gonna call this same flock. Now inside of here, we can delete start and update, and we're going to change this to inherit from context filter. Now we'll need to refactor this to implement our abstract class. We can delete the exception that's being thrown. And instead what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna set up a new filtered list. So we're gonna say list transform called filter equals a new list of transforms. And then we're gonna iterate through our original list and see for each transform, is it a flock agent? Is it a member of the same flock? And if so, if both of those things are true, then it can be added to the filtered list. So we'll say for each transform item in original, flock agent item agent, this is basically going to be, if this item is a flock agent, then this is going to refer to that flock agent component attached, equals item dot get component flock agent. So if this item isn't a flock agent, then this will just be null. So now we can check if item agent does not equal null, meaning there is in fact an, a flock agent component attached, and item agent dot agent flock equals our agents agent flock, meaning they're in the same flock. If both of those things are true, then filtered dot add item. And at this point we're adding item not item agent because this is actually taking in the, tran the original transform that we're working with. This was just really to check that we have the right item to add. Once we've gone through all of those, then we'll simply return filtered. And this is one basic filter that we've created now. So now we can go back into Unity and we can go to our filter objects, create, flock. We have this new category filter, same flock, creates the for us. We can say same flock filter 
And now we have this scriptable object that we can work with. Now, unfortunately, we don't have anywhere that we can actually put this yet. If we go to our behavior objects, we obviously don't have a, um, any sort of reference to this filter that we can apply. So the thing about this is, though, that not every single um, behavior should necessarily have this filter. For example, the stay in radius behavior that we have doesn't really care about other objects. It only cares about the state that it has up here of the center and the radius. So we don't need in every case for there to be this variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, kind of middleman abstract class. So we have our flock behavior and then we're going to have another layer which is the filtered flock behavior. So some things will inherit from filtered flock behavior, which inherits from flock behavior, while there's other things, like our composites and our stay in radius, will inherit directly from flock behavior. So we're going to do this by creating a new C-sharp script up here. I'm going to call this filtered flock behavior. Open this up in Visual Studio. We're going to delete, start an update. We're going to have this inherit from flock behavior, but it's also going to be abstract. So it doesn't actually need to implement uh, filter flock, uh, flock behaviors calculate move method. But we are going to add to this now a public context filter called filter. OK. So with that in place, now what we can do is we can go into the behaviors that we want to be filtered things like our cohesion behavior, avoidance, and alignment, and our steered cohesion. And all we need to do in all of these is to simply change so that this inherits from filtered flock behavior in each of these cases instead of flock behavior. And what we'll see now in Unity is that if we go to our behavior objects and open up something like our cohesion, we now have this option to place in the, uh, the filter. So for example, for cohesion, I'm going to want to make sure that that has the same flock for steer cohesion. In this case, all of these, we're going to just use the same flock right now. Avoidance and alignment. So we have this assigned now, but we're not actually applying it yet. So this is the last step that we need to do, which is that we need to now go into each of these scripts. And at this point here, we need to know now that this context needs to be filtered. So there is a chance that maybe we don't want to actually filter. Maybe we have an avoidance that's supposed to avoid everything on the screen. We're not going to actually put any sort of context filter in there. There, is, there are situations where that filter may be null, and we want to account for that. So we're going to use a conditional operator to check. And so if, we're, if we don't have a filter, then we'll just use context as is. If we do have a filter, then we'll apply that. So we'll do this by saying list transform we'll call this filtered context equals, and we'll say here, filter equals null. And I'm actually going to put this in parentheses just to make sure that this is kind of contained. And then we'll add a question mark. So check if this is true. If it's true, we have no filter, then we can just use context. Otherwise, we will want to use filter dot filter and pass in our agent and context. And then our filter, whichever one we happen to be using, will process that, give us back a new list here for this filtered context. And then we just need to make sure that when we iterate through this for each, we're iterating through the filtered context, which again could be this original one, but might not be. So we want to make sure we're using this variable. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this two lines here into each of our filtered. Oops, one second. I think I deleted something that I didn't want to there. Yes, I did. So you're going to replace the for each line in each and add in this filtered context line. 
Okay. So with that in there for each of these, we can now, we now know that this will be filtered through based on a filter that's in there. So with that, we can go back to Unity. We have our two flocks still. They both have these same behaviors. And we see that they all have the same flock filters. So what we should see now is that they each operate independently of one another while still flocking with members of their own flock. And there we go. Now we see that they're definitely grouping together. They're crossing each other's paths without actually interacting. But when they encounter agents of their same flock, then they behave as a flock and group up together. So that's exactly what we're looking for here. And this filtering method gives us a lot of opportunities now where we can kind of use this context of what our, what our neighbors are and make decisions based on what the actual identity of those neighbors are. So we can implement things like, you know, fleeing away from enemies or avoiding obstacles. And we'll cover obstacles in our next video, which will probably be the last video in this series. In the meantime, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like these. Consider supporting on Patreon if you want to help make more videos like these possible. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.